Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have ISTP versus ISFP. And so Jackie, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Jackie. I am an ISTP, I think Enneagram type nine. Um, and I haven't been into typology long, but uh, I finally feel like I found my type. So uh, this is really exciting for me. Awesome. And Anne? Hi, I'm Anne. Um, I'm an ISFP. I think my Enneagram's type four, but I don't know an awful lot about that system. Um, I'm from the UK. My hobbies are art, poetry, um, mountain biking. Mm -hmm. Those are lovely hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and clothes. Clothes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as we can tell. And your pretty rings as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a typing session with Jackie and we were going between ISTP and ISFP, but we we needed a little bit of help figuring that out. So I invited Anne and with our combined powers together, we we typed Jackie as an ISTP and we came up with some really interesting compare and contrast similarities and differences that we thought we'd share during this video. So let's get to it. And uh, I'm wondering, what are some questions that you asked Jackie when we were figuring out her type? <laughs> so the um, the biggest one um, was like, you know, would you be more likely, you know, if you were to like kill someone or be a murderer, would you be more likely to do that, um, you know, in hot blood um, or, or would you be like cold blooded and calculated about it? Mm -hmm. if... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I totally uh, was like, yeah, definitely cold blood for me. Just because for me, like when I feel anger, it's a slow build and a simmer kind of. Um, so I don't know that I would ever like be overcome and be like hot blood, like going to kill someone. Um, but definitely something like simmers and increases in uh, intensity, then I, I could definitely see that more likely than hot blood for me. Yeah, and, and I think it's like almost the opposite for me. So sometimes if something like really angers or upsets me, um, mm -hmm. you know, sort of in that moment or at that time, I'll be like, you know, I will literally boil over, you know, I will <laughs> erupt and, um, you know, it will just, it'll need to come out as soon as I've got like a safe place to do it. And I will, you know, say things I'll regret, say terrible things, but then I could never plan it because like, by the time it got to a planning stage, I would be calm and probably regretting what I'd said. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like it disappears as quickly as it comes? Kind of, yeah. I think okay. the only time it doesn't is if I'm in like a recurring situation that keeps on making me angry and I'm not able to get myself out of it. So I've like worked with people that I've struggled with and stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, but even then it's like... I'm kind of like I'm okay then something will happen and I'll blow up and yeah I think it might be like if someone's really really upset me or a situation's really upset me I'll get that initial anger I'll boil over I'll calm down but I think it's like like it might come back up again for me at some point in the future but yeah that's pretty much it hmm. yeah interesting for me it's like if someone's wronged me it's um kind of like a low level like um kind of like a dislike and ap or apathy for for the person but it's definitely like a low line that doesn't really change over time <laughs> it never really peaked it was just kind of like uh yeah a coldness i guess yeah and jackie you mentioned an, how when you feel emotion sometimes there's an emotional delay too yeah oh mm -hmm. could you go a bit into that yeah like like I've definitely had moments where I'll be with someone and like something kind of stressful happens and they'll be like, oh, are you, are you okay with this? Like, you're not mad at me, right? Like we're all good. Right. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's whatever. It's not bothering me. And then like a day later I'll be like simmering over it and I'll be like, wait, I know I said this was okay, but it's actually not. Can we talk about it? Like it definitely uh, takes time for, for it to register for me. Mm hmm yeah, I think that only ever happens for me, like, um, 
if like a new possible meaning on something someone did or said pops in then if I hadn't have figured that out before then I might be angry or something but otherwise yeah it's normally the feelings there straight away kind of thing yeah do you ever uh like get overcome with tears and not know what the cause is or do you always kind of know how to pinpoint it mm, I would say I always know or I feel like I always know so I guess you probably get everyone must get that thing where like something makes you cry but really maybe it's like a few things that have happened or something mm. but it always feels like it's the the thing for me like the thing okay. that's happened yeah yeah for me if, if I'm feeling um some negative emotion uh what I have to do is like write down potential causes like what maybe it's this that's mm. causing it or maybe it's this that's causing it and then like I'll have to keep trying things until something really clicks. I'm like, oh, okay. That's what I was upset about. But like, it's it's not obvious to me all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think the only time I get anything similar to that is like if you've got something that the thing itself is like a slow build. So uh, I don't know, like being in isolation in COVID is a good one. That has like a building up, you know, like a compounding effect on your emotions, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, other than that, like normal stuff. Probably and not for, me. for that for that kind of build. Do you feel it building or does it surprise you? Mm, yeah, and no, really. Yeah, I don't know on that one. I always feel like on some level, I probably always know. It's just like, how much do I know or how much am I paying attention yeah. to that? What have I got going on? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. For me, it's like uh, I'll surprise myself and be like, oh wow I'm like really adjusting well to this and then one day I'll just have like a nervous breakdown and I'll be like oh I was not as good as I thought it was <laughs> like I feel like the emotions come first and then the understanding comes later for me mm. like they, they take me by surprise more often yeah and I think the only way I get what you've just said is like moment to moment so if I'm having a happy day and let's say yesterday was a bad day I'll be like, oh, wow, yeah, like I'm doing so good in lockdown. This is great, blah, 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 blah. And I'll feel like all the happy emotions mm -hmm. that go along with that. And then the next day, if it's a bad day again, it's like that one that's there is is the thing that has existed all the time, but it's not, if that makes sense. Yeah, true. I, I can't see like a timeline of it, I think, yeah. Oh, okay. When I was trying to find my type, I had like a three week period where I thought I was an ENFP. I'd be like the worst, like most laziest ENFP ever, by the way. But but it was like for those three weeks, I believed that. So that was all that had ever existed. I wasn't, re but I wasn't properly looking back on, you know, myself, my life, my past objectively. Mm -hmm. Yes, my FI user friends do do that. It's kind of like <laughs> when, when they're, believing in a certain value at that moment it's like that's all consuming and that is the value of like I don't know it feels like it's I don't know how to explain it and that's a really good distinction I just don't know how to put my finger on it <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah I think so and a similar thing happens with like the FI passions as well so I don't know say if I become obsessed with like a certain piece of art and I want to like I don't know replicate that in my clothes in I don't know like what I'm thinking about myself through the various concepts and meanings of that piece of art and stuff I will literally feel like you know yes you are the thing I'm gonna love you forever I'm always gonna like be I don't know wearing these clothes you know I want this thing to last forever so again I just pro I project the future onto that but then it's just suddenly gone and it was like similar to the ENFP thing I was telling you about it was like for three weeks I thought I was an ENFP and consumed all this ENFP information, I was really looking at myself through that, and then just suddenly it stopped. It's like if it's not the right thing, it will just suddenly go, like one day you wake up and it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, FI is kind of like a switch. At one moment it's very passionate, and then if the switch turns, then it no longer, the passion just cuts off like that. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> For me, it feels a lot more flatline <laughs> over time or steadily up and down, but yeah. Yeah, 
This reminds me of the cold-blooded versus hot-blooded question. It seems like with Anne, Fi has moments of hot blood or like intense passion, and then at a certain moment, it can just fade away like instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's like it's it well, it makes you feel fickle sometimes because you're like this thing I loved is now suddenly like dead to me. It doesn't really happen with people, thank God. Other than like if I'm at like a, I don't know a wedding or a party and you're talking to somebody, you're focusing on them, and then suddenly you want to go. That can happen. But it doesn't happen with the people I care about in my life. Thank God, yeah. So yeah. you want to stick around for me, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That actually gives me an idea. Um, do you uh, find it easier to set boundaries related to, like, your extroversion and introversion? Because for me, it's like, because I'm not always aware of how I feel, sometimes I'll overextend myself in social situations, and then after I'll have the crash. Um, I don't know if that's just an introvert thing or... Maybe if you're more in tune with how you're feeling, you can figure that out better. Mm, yeah, possibly. Like, what what do you mean by like overextend yourself socially, like energy or how you've acted with people or? Yeah, like, I'll instead of retreating when I'm feeling overwhelmed or tired, um, I won't necessarily key into that, and I'll just stay socializing for like the rest of the night, and then. Afterwards, I'll just be like totally exhausted because it'll kind of catch up to me. Mm, not so much, but I guess like, yeah, there's some times when if something's not like finishing or whatever, like a party or something, and I'm mm. tired and I need to leave, I don't know, with my husband, I will, I will stay. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think generally if I was that exhausted, I would go. Yeah. yeah. I'm usually one of the last people to leave parties like because I just don't know when to leave. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. STP friend is like that too. It's kind of like <laughs> his FE is on at the moment. And he's like, yeah, people. And then he doesn't realize how tired, tired he is until he leaves. And he's like, oh no, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and funny. so it is very funny. And so and I saw your rings when you were bringing up your hand. And I think it's a very ISFP thing to have the type of rings that you have. But I don't know if it's personal. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to show it on it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So that's like a muff from one of my favorite jewelers. Um, and yeah, I got that. Like one, just because I think they look cool. But um, also... I like to like, have meaning in like my jewelry and stuff. So I like moths because they represent transformation. Um, what else have I got? Yeah, I've got like a snake Ouroboros ring, uh, like snake eating its own tail. Um, and there's, yeah, there's lots of things that that represents, but it's also because I like how it looks. Um, I've got like a, a little seahorse because I love the sea. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with my ISFP friends, with some of them, I noticed that they even have like rings that show their kind of FI signature, their unique signature. Or I have an ISFP friend and she also has rings too. And it's like these angel wings or it's something that signifies something. It's so artistic. Um, I, I know multiple ISFPs who have it too. So I, it's mm. not just an and thing. I think it's an ISFP thing with some of them. It has to mean something. It's connected to your uh, tertiary NI, right? And it has that yeah. concept meaning and that ISFP aestheticism too, <laughs> as well to it. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite singers before the Gazette, the lead singer, Ruki, he is an ISFP and he also has that type of ISFP thing as well. It's, it's a thing. And so I thought maybe our next topic, our next topic could be clothing. And so, Anne, could you tell us about the evolution of your look throughout time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because there's just been like a million. So like, yeah, way, way too many to mention. I think, yeah, I think I have always liked clothes. Um, I didn't have like much money growing up. So I just kind of did what I could with what I had. But I think the first time I remember like really getting that self-expression thing was... Um, yeah, I was a big uh, Nirvana fan um, as a young teenager. And um, yeah, I 
basically went around like I, I, mean, I don't think anyone knew what cosplay was at the time I didn't um, but I went around like I was dressed up as Kurt Cobain for like a very long time um, because I identified with that character so much um, or his personality rather he's not a character um, I just you know got super deep into like the the music the scene and stuff um, that I needed to I guess express that um, but yeah I've been into like all kinds of like different things sometimes blending them sometimes just the thing in itself um like I've done everything from you know I've been into like the Victorian gothic steampunk aesthetic um you know I've been into like the hippie thing um you know sometimes I've created like a whole look just on like a film or a book series or something um so, you know, I became obsessed with Lord of the Rings stuff at one point. Um, what else? But yeah, so I even had like, even like last year as like a grown 34 year old woman, um, you know, I've always liked Van Gogh and I just suddenly became obsessed with the sunflower painting and like everything that I was thinking, everything that I was wearing um, was just through that painting. Um, yeah, I was, and I was like tracking down clothes that were like sunflower yellow and yeah. Oh, um, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I don't really know how to like describe how it changes over time, but um, right now it just seems to be like, I've always loved the sea and that obsession seems to have resurfaced for me. I think because I can't physically go there at the moment because we're in lockdown in England. Um, and I'm kind of combining that aesthetic with trying to be more like um, aligned with my values. So um, I'm now personally against fast fashion and I won't buy new stuff that's not from a sustainable brand. So that's kind of working its way in um, and um, not dyeing my hair multiple different colours all the time which is what I used to do as well. Again, my hair colour, my hair cut would change with whatever the thing was that I was obsessed with at the time. Yeah. You're looking for like, what is the most meest me thing there is? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I do wear things uh, that are meaningful to me in some ways. Like I was talking about my uh, green wedding, wedding ring is symbolic of certain things. And like um, my necklace is like a, I bought it at a vegan festival. Um, so it's like little tidbits here and there. Um, but I don't know. I, yeah, I feel like it is consistent over time. Like I have a lot of lion clothing, but lion is just like my thing and it's been my thing. And yeah, so I have like things that are important to me, but they do stay pretty consistent, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a comment you made, Jackie, before where you're like, you were wearing something when you were 12 and you're like, you could see yourself still wearing that. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, I, I have the item of clothing or like, yeah. Like I'm still wearing Converse's since I was like in high school. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like Dexter in the sense that like my closet's full of the same clothing, but maybe like different color, <laughs> but it's like the same cut uh, and like the same style. I just change the color out every day. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. That's fascinating. I feel like this is a very good compare and contrast of Enneagram types as well with the type nine and the type four, where the type nine oh. is more of a not knowing itself. It's more of a go with the flow. It's more of the whatever's fine type of uh, type of deal, whereas the type four is more about individualistic <laughs> expression and yeah, letting yeah. out that personality. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm very fussy with clothing um, or it's even if I can't explain what the thing is, like, yeah, I, n I really know if I like it or not. Like, um, are you fussy on what you, I don't know, will buy or wear or put together, Jackie, or are you quite relaxed about it? I'm um, talking about in terms of quality or in terms of, like, look? Because mm, I, I am... Look, actually, I didn't even think about quality. But okay, because yeah. I was going to say, I buy, like, really cheap clothes, so I'm not fussed about, like, quality like that, but mm. I am a little bit... Um, like I do feel uncomfortable wearing things that don't feel right. Um, at work, we dress business casual and I don't want to be wearing like the slacks and a blouse. Like it doesn't feel good on me. Um, so I try to like bend the rules and uh, wear something that feels better. But yeah, I'm a little fussy in that way. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that you said that because um, I, when I worked in an office and it went smart, it went from smart, smart to smart casual. So, um, yeah, I would slowly like bring little things in that pushed it further and further <laughs> until like one day I was like, yeah, no one's noticing this. OK, bam, blue hair. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't like conforming to rules that don't make sense to me. And because I don't like, I don't interface with the customer at all. Um, I just see my coworkers uh, that I don't see the reason of dressing fancy. So it's like, why, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I've heard like TI users say like, they'll follow rules if they make sense to them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you asked a question about do you see yourself as more complex or do you see other people as more complex before or something like that? Do you remember what you asked? Uh, yeah, me... like, are, are you guilty of like thinking of yourself as um, more emotionally complex than like, I don't know, the people around you or the people in your life? And yeah, I feel like I am. And then I feel horrible when I've kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, I, but I definitely do sort of think that I've got the most emotional whatever it is going on um yeah and you answered differently didn't you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I definitely um see others as more emotionally complex than me um because a lot of the times I'll someone will talk about how they feel about something and I don't quite understand where it would come from or why they would feel that way um and yeah so I feel like other people are feeling more things than me and more complex things too yeah so maybe you're right to think that you're more emotionally complex. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like a bit douchey for like um, you know, thinking that. <laughs> no, and I feel robotic. Things, so, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. And so, Jackie, you mentioned about how you identify with doing rather than uh, who you are. Could you go into that? Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of developing myself has to do with um, improving my skills, becoming more self-sufficient, um, like being a more evolved or more grown up person to me means like being able to do more. Um, and so I guess that kind of ties to my identity too, is like, what am I capable of? Um, that's like who I am, I guess. And what I'm interested in, I guess, yeah. How about you, Anne? I was just thinking like with yours is that like the TI like need for competence kind of thing yeah what do you mean Jackie like you know if you identify yourself with the things that you do like what what does that look like I guess um I'm referring to like when I am proud of myself and who I am it's because I've done something that I'm proud of you know and not necessarily uh yeah I don't know I don't have any like specific values that I would need to be aligned with to be proud of myself and you know what I mean mm. so it's mostly like what am I practically doing yeah yeah so I kind of like get yours a little bit that like and I think it's that like getting into the SE thing so you know like I like painting and writing poetry and if I haven't done mm -hmm. it for ages and I'm not building the skill of doing it after a while, the idealism I've got that like I'm good at these things and I like them and that's part of me and stuff will start to go because I guess I'm I'm losing the skill. But then at the same time, I kind of feel like none of that matters if if I feel like I'm not working on not being a crappy person and <laughs> maybe like overcoming some of that kind of stuff within myself. Um, yeah. Do you mind sharing what kind of stuff that is? So yeah, um, I won't go into detail, but like I had some like upsetting stuff that happened to me like in, in my teenage years and whatever. And um, I've gone on for a very long time without like properly processing that um, because I think at the time I just wanted to get through it and like move forward and then thought that would like be okay because I was feeling emotions at the time and stuff. It wasn't like, I don't know, it was like a post thing, but yeah I don't know like I I feel like there's this like constant quest to be a better self and kind of like unearth and work on those things and yeah I don't even know why um Interesting. I guess 
yeah so like i used lockdown to like i don't know like it's it's really hard to explain it like an nfp would probably be better um but it's like i just want to go in and like tackle that stuff i just <laughs> it's really it's really hard it's yeah. literally i guess it's like sitting with it and and like feeling the emotions of the thing that happened and going at that thing from like all emotional angles and letting it come up and then thinking about it from lots of different ways and stuff and then trying to like think how you're going to behave as a person in the future because of that yeah I, I don't know interesting <laughs> no that's interesting you say that because uh I also used lockdown to like improve myself but the way I did that was to like practice my hobbies <laughs> mm -hmm. which is so different but like I also want to be a good person but I, I don't think I would know how to work on myself to improve that. So that's interesting that to you, that's like kind of just intuitive, like I'm gonna work on myself and this is how I do it. And it's like natural, it's cool. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just like visiting like those dark places and acknowledging that they're there and trying to understand understand why, I don't know. And yeah, what you wanna do about it. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's interesting to hear though about um, you said you're vegan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so so me too, because I know like something like that's very ethical, like veganism is very stereotypically like yeah. guy, isn't it? But in reality, <laughs> like so many people are vegan. So yeah, yeah well, it's just the curious thing, yeah. <laughs> well, my sister was always vegan or not always, but she was always telling me to become vegan. Um, and she she's an INFP. She was tossing all the um, ethical reasons to become vegan. Um, and I never, I was like, yeah, I know it sucks for animals. I know like, ugh, it's awful, but like, it, it didn't feel like my responsibility um, mm -hmm. until she shared something that was like, cause I was dealing with bad acne at the time. And she was like, look, being vegan, like made these people cure their acne. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll try it. Um, and I tried it and it really fixed my acne. Um, so that's like the, catalyst was like selfish reasons and then it became ethical over time when I was like learning about it and that from from a more open mind because I had already started being vegan so I wasn't like defensive about it mm. um and then it, then the ethical things clicked in and the environmental and all that stuff but um yeah it's just funny I had to like have a different catalyst for me to dive in but yeah yeah mine was like kind of almost the other way around like um I've been really sensitive to like animal stuff ever since I was really young like one of the earliest memories for me is um yeah going to see uh Jurassic Park and not liking it because like the animals were trapped and being like oh. used for the people's advantage and stuff like that um free willy traumatized me for like a very oh. long time <laughs> um oh. yeah and I tried going vegan like quite young um so this was like when it wasn't like incredibly popular. So I think this must have been like maybe like 15 years ago. Um, but unlike you, I didn't have the knowledge. I, I wasn't like improving my acne and stuff. I didn't know how to eat. So it made me it made me ill, but I wanted to do it anyway. Wow. And then I moved away from it and came back to it because even though I wasn't doing it for, for health reasons, something just kept like nagging at me like you know this isn't this isn't how you want to live kind of thing and I think maybe like so I've been vegan like five years maybe um nice. and by that point all the information you know all the research was coming in about you know what you said Jackie so about like it being potentially better for health and all of that kind of stuff yeah and I was like oh, okay I can live the life I want without like <laughs> nearly killing myself by having like poor nutrition yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you have to know how to do it it's not it's not obvious but yeah, yeah. something I wondered if it, if it was like a little more likely for a TI user to do is that Jackie sometimes you cheat on your veganism diet slightly right? yeah. yeah yeah I've already um because I I mean being vegan is really hard to be healthy and I also can't eat, have gluten so I started introducing mm -hmm. like eggs and fish back in um and like, yeah, it's definitely not um, super strict for me. It's it's more conceptual, something I want to do, something I want to strive for. Cool. 
Yeah. What I notice is like sometimes FI users will stay harder with their values than than someone else <laughs> who may have that value. When I notice an FI user going vegan, they like go gung ho vegan, like they cold turkey cut off everything and they're very intense about <laughs> it. I, I notice a trend with people who aren't FI users, while they may have values, they're less like less gung ho about maintaining them at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah, does that hold true for you? That holds true for, or I don't know if you're talking about Anne, but um, that holds true for me and my INFP sister is a lot more gung-ho about it. So that rings true for sure. Yeah, I find I have to moderate myself because of like practicality. So I'm really trying to cut out plastic use at the moment. And, um, you know, sometimes you just have to have that acceptable spillage because otherwise you're going to make your life miserable living in the extremes. But like part of me just so badly wants to just live exactly like how I want you know because every time I put like a piece of plastic out to be recycled I'm like oh no <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I wonder how are FI users hard on themselves and how are TI DOMs hard on themselves it's a good question yeah because when <laughs> Anne mentioned the plastic and like when she'll even like a small piece when like whenever an FI user has to like a little bit go against their values like it, it like kills them inside <laughs> they're like oh <laughs> like, when Anne was mentioning the plastic that's exactly that so do you ever get killed inside because you did something against a hard set in value Jackie for me um for me it's always tied to competency <laughs> um like I the other day I was um cleaning my mirror um and my husband like was like but there's like you like missed this entire section and I was like oh my gosh I'm so bad like because it, that's just how I like live my life is just chaotically and, I'm, and I, it like hit me I was like dang I'm a bad person <laughs> um and similarly like we were trying to um take out a ladder and I was like doing it all wrong and it like I was like, how come I can't, like, I've done this before. Why am I not able to do it? It's all about like competency, I guess. Yeah. 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 And this is interesting because Jackie, you feel bad because of your husband's perception of your job. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you feel bad because of how your husband will feel about it. So it's yeah. kind of a roundabout way of, of feeling bad about it. Whereas Anne, when Anne <laughs> feels bad, it's it's her own value. It's like, oh, I'm I'm not doing what's right by putting plastic in like, and, and making more, tr more garbage in the world. Right. So <laughs> on more of a, her thing, it's like, a am yeah. upset that I'm doing this. Too. Yeah. I was, I was definitely perfectly happy with how I cleaned the mirror until I realized that it was like not enough for someone else. And then I was like, Oh dang, like oh, something yeah. that was supposed to be like nice for him was not, <laughs> uh, I'm with you. but yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I could see myself if I really like doing this thing and, you know, like the purpose is that I really wanted someone to love it and I'd done it wrong then. Yeah, I think I'd probably feel that way too. Mm -hmm. But with the mirror thing, stuff literally happens all the time. Like I do housework <laughs> jobs and um, yeah, like my husband's like, oh yeah, that's like, I don't know, needs going over again or something. And I'm just like, oh, so I really have to like, <laughs> or like if, if I'm designated a job, I'll be like, well, you know, I'm going to like purposely do a bad job because I don't want to do it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. but like the physical competency thing is interesting. But again, I think it's like more to the self because I've got examples of where I've wanted to do something and be physically good at it. And when that idealism hasn't been lived up to um I've had like a meltdown so it happened with archery when we went with a group of people at like some weekend break they were putting archery on and I was like oh my god that's going to be so cool it's going to be so fun I'm going to be really good at it and then I was crap and I was actually a bit scared of the bow and part of it was because I'm quite small but like some of it was just like I didn't have any skill there and I don't know whether like that's like sometimes you bypass SE and it needs work and stuff but I didn't want it to need work I just expected to show up and just be like yep I'm really good at that thing let's have fun and when I wasn't yeah I like we were with a group of people and it took all of my self-control to not have a meltdown like when it was me and my husband at the side I was like almost boiling over you know in frustration <laughs> that I couldn't do this thing mm -hmm. interesting 
Do you think it depends on if other people are around or not? Or if you were like fully alone, would that bother you to not be um, good yeah. at it naturally? Oh, yeah. interesting. Because we, <laughs> when we first went mountain biking together as well, like I didn't have the skill level that I wanted to have um, because I was a beginner. So, but I didn't see it that way. I was like, I like it. I want to be good at this. So, so I should be. Um, yeah. And I'd like oh. have little meltdowns at the end of each little trail section. And yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, I find like FI users, sometimes they're the hardest judge of themselves. Like, I don't know, they can look at a performance they did or something they did and they'll critique it. And it sometimes outer feedback, like sometimes it does matter if, if the purpose is for the other person, but but if the purpose is like an artistic expression, what I notice about FI users is that like their internal reaction to what they're creating can be so visceral that I kind of like, overtakes everything. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, <laughs> I don't know how to, do you know what I'm getting at? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I think with that, I don't know, like, it wasn't like expression. I think it was maybe just idealism put on, on, on the essay and, um, you know, like wanting to like have fun. And sometimes it's hard at the beginner stage of something like that to have fun because you're doing the training wheel stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes a whole lot of sense. And so, Jackie, did you have any notes <laughs> on, on anything else you'd like to mention? Yeah, I mean, that kind of uh, goes into when we were talking about um, envisioning, like, your NI future of, like, you were talking about poetry, right, entering your poem into a contest, um, and how that feels to have when you think of that NI vision of success. Um, Sorry, for me, it was about, um, <laughs> like I was writing an app or I'm making an app. And when I think of the NI future of like, oh, my app's going to be used, it's going to be a success. Um, that gives me like energy. I guess I could call mm -hmm. it like a flow state. Like, I just feel like I want to do, do, do. Um, but yeah, it seemed different for you. Did you want to talk about that? Yeah. So kind of similar as in like you know envision it being a success and I, I guess maybe like that's the NI and something clicks onto because it feels I don't know if like with your NI like sometimes it feels like divine inspiration like you've just got this idea it's the thing you know it works and that's like really exciting but I think like with like my poem there was like the um yeah maybe like the FITE thing of like you know I was picturing not purposely because it feels so douchey to say it but like it just started playing through my head of like um you know me winning the poetry contest and what that would feel like and I had this NI inspiration about what I could write about and I guess so for me Jackie it was like really intense and that intensity I guess feeds into the energy and the excitement to like do the thing mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that makes sense You'll notice like when Anne, Anne says things, like she'll say, oh, that was douchey of me. Or like, like I know it says F-I tends to make like self-judgments as, as it's talking. So they'll say, like, oh, that made me feel sad. Or or they'll say things like, oh, that was douchey of me. It's something F-I does. I don't know why it does this, but it's an F-I thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Mm, I'm just trying to think. So I think, some of it is from like you know like when we had the call initially and I was talking about like like feeling burned by people when I was younger you know sometimes I know like people say F I's inward but when I was a kid like I was just so innocent that everything was just kind of out there and I just went around like doing what I loved and and if I was on top of the world I was on top of the world and if I loved something and was doing something I'd be just putting it out there having fun and I don't know whether like I've kind of like from feedback I had and stuff whether I've learned to like moderate that a little bit and I think there is always that I don't know like a raw personality type self-deprecating but like I do always have that little sort of self-deprecating thing that comes in after yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah yeah self-deprecating fi comments throughout <laughs> speech is very fi <laughs> yeah so jackie you mentioned about your app and and so i had an estp friend type match 
she she mentioned about how when she's making her app and someone asks her, hey, what is the story behind your app? She's like, I don't really have a story to tell you. It's an app. And like, yeah. like Kate from Type Match was telling me about how everyone's looking for her FI, like her story for the reason why she did it, that narrative. That's like mm -hmm. un that FI undercurrent for why this is so important. And she's like, it's, it's an app. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> maybe you could go into your app and how you see the story of your app. Yeah, for me, if, if someone asked me that question, um, my answer is just, I wanted to see if I could do it. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, for, so I'm working with an INTP on the app. For me, uh, the focus is just, I want him to give me his any ideas and I want to implement them. Like, that's just my part of the project is I want to push my limits and I want to like see what I can do, I guess. Um, but I don't want it. I don't have any of my own ideas to really put to it. So that's why I kind of like working with him. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a personal thing unless you consider competency, which is my thing. Um, it's just kind of like proving myself and then improving, yeah. Yeah, and do you have any FI backstories to the things that you're a part of and why you're a part of it? A story with a value behind it, kind of like, yeah. I think so, because when we were talking about it, I was like, yeah, like, I'm sure I always like layer romanticized stories and stuff over things. And um, but I'm, I'm really struggling to think of like a, a specific one right now. But I guess to like carry the conversation on something you made me think then, Jackie, was like, you know, the fact that you're working on that, that's like, you know, really cool. And you say it's like testing your competency and stuff like that. But like you're not talking so much about putting like your personality into it. Like, mm -hmm. would you say that's kind of a thing? Yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't know what personality to put in it. <laughs> as bad as that sounds, um, I've I've always wanted to do kind of side projects, but I've never known like where to go with it or what I want from it. <laughs> so yeah. that's always been the the why. It's like the why and the how. I care about the how, or not the why and the how, sorry, the what and the how. Um, I care about the how, I don't really care about the what, which seems kind of backwards. <laughs> mm. but yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying to think like of a project y thing for me, and like there isn't, like thinking of backstory for it kind of is weird, but like, um, so like my wedding when I, when I got married, um, like a couple of years back, um, obviously the backstory is is our is our relationship and I think I've got stories in my head about like how I found the venue and stuff like that but I don't feel like I'm good enough to like tell them right now but um <laughs> definitely like there was a lot of like me in there so the way I approached that you know like that like that project if you compare it as something similar to developing an app because it's kind of like your baby it has its own timeline you've got to like do things and then you've got like this end result right that's probably where the similarities are and mm -hmm. um yeah so like with me with that I guess if I was talking about that it was just there was just so much of like myself in there and and, and my husband too like everything in there like had to had to mean something to us and had to had to be our our aesthetic um like you know when you were doing the app did you have anything that like you wouldn't budge over or anything like that at all not really i mean it has just started um but okay. i've pretty much decided on like which tools i want to use and mm -hmm. i'm just like hey intp tell me what you want me to do with it <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah it's i have like no concept of uh what i want it to be really okay cool yeah um it's interesting as well because I didn't like want to like go down the route of stereotypes but you know like when we were talking and you were like considering ISFP and ISTP like like developing an app just automatically sounds a bit more ISTP and mm -hmm. you know I, I was telling you that my brother's an ISTP and he's kind of like you know a bit more techie like you as well um mm -hmm. and I don't know I guess it was just one tiny piece of information but it probably does trend a little bit more that ISTPs are a bit more on the techie side than ISFPs. Me personally, yeah. like not techie 
at all like <laughs> no way <laughs> yeah and it's like for me I'm not creative at all so I feel like that's kind of the FI equivalent mm -hmm. right yeah and to add to that, FI likes creative control too. So what Anne was trying to get at is they have a certain aesthetic they might want to go for for certain parts of the app and they won't want to budge. So FI gets kind of attached to the things it creates sometimes. So it's like, hey, we should do it this way. It'll look better this way. So it'll have an aesthetic preference. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, interesting. And so I'm wondering if we could go over the similarities that you both have. The shared S E N I. I yeah. remember that Joyce said that the way we talk is very, um, I don't know what you, how you said it, straightforward or easy to follow, mm. which was the S E N I. Yes, yes, that is true. And it's very brief as well. So before we started this, you were like, I'm not sure if I'll be able to talk for that long. <laughs> That's the signature ISTP concern with my videos. Whenever I, I'm about to film, the ISTP is like, Joyce, I don't have much to say. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> yeah, a lot easier to have people to ping off of for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something I know about you, Jackie, is that you're kind of in the moment. You don't really project that far ahead into the future, which is an ISTP thing and an ISFP thing for some of them. Mm. It's kind of a day by day, taking things day by day approach. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something I think I, I plan like into maybe the next week and then um, anything beyond that is a very vague idea of like, maybe I wanna move to a different state one day, but I don't know what state, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't really think too far in the future. Yeah, so those are perceiver qualities. So people with a P at the end of their code. What you and Anne shared as well is you guys mentioned before how when you're at work and you don't want to do that work, you'll keep putting it off until it big builds into a big thing. Yeah, so maybe if you wanted to go into that. Yeah, there's definitely like, um, especially when it has to do with paperwork, I hate paperwork. So I think I had to like mail something um, and it took me about seven months to finally mail it. Um, just because the act of like getting an envelope and putting a stamp on it was like too much. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so definitely, even though it like bit me in the butt. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, like I was telling you, wasn't I on the call that, um, you know, I managed people for a little while and I had to do like a one to one on, you know, like how they were doing the performance and stuff every month. And I had a deadline to have like, do the write up of like that conversation we had. And so the conversation getting that done was fine. But yeah, the write up, like um, in the, like I say, in the early days of doing that job. So my boat, part of my bonus was like based on how good my record keeping was. And yeah, I lost that part <laughs> of my bonus a few times at first. And I really had to discipline myself. Um, it reminded me though, Jackie, that um, in the book that Personality Hacker wrote, when they talk about like SE is the second function, um, it's like um, it's really good development for that to like do something straight away. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I find that, yeah, I either do things straight away or I do that horrible stacking thing. And if I can just make myself do them straight away. Yeah, that that is good. <laughs> yeah, that actually uh is like when I clean my house, what I do is like maybe I'll clean the litter box and then I'll like walk past um, the trash can and I see that it's full. So I'll like stop what I'm doing, take out the trash and then I'll see something else and I'll do that. And like eventually I'll get back around to doing the litter. But like it's I basically go off into a million different directions because like if I don't do them right when I see them, I'm not going to do them. Um, and like that's just how I clean. I don't do it in a particular order at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar, really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of the SE users I've interviewed, they mentioned that seeing and doing component where they have to kind of see it. It has to be in their mind in the moment for them to want to do it or else they forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so in my first typing session, um, there was something I said that was, uh, I thought was going to be a lack of FI, but Joyce, you said that it was um, a lower down NI. So I'm, I'm wondering if, Anne, you can relate to it. But basically, um, I work for a government contractor um, and we, we test like missile software. Um, and that like, it never occurred to me that that was potentially unethical until um, someone pointed it out to me and was like, you know, that like you're working on something that's going to kill people. 
Um, and like, for me, it, it was never a focus of like, I need to work on, I need to have a job that is going to do good in the world. Um, and that was never a focus of like, what's the outcome of what I'm doing. Um, but that's, that could be lower down NI and it could also be just like <laughs> lack of FI values. Um, but do you relate to that? I can see that as kind of like both maybe because I think, yeah, because as soon as you said missiles, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't think I could yeah. do that kind of thing. Um, um, so, yeah, I do tend to notice that. But maybe if it's something that's more obscure and I, it's not obvious to me what my ethical position is, like, do I notice that sort of ethical thing? Yeah, I would say, unless it was something that, wouldn't obviously come with an ethical position that would offend me and then if I found that out later it bothered me mm -hmm. but the second part of what you said or the second part I'm thinking about what you said is I do have this thing where like I don't think things through to their conclusion and all the consequences enough and mm -hmm. and so like I might think something it doesn't really come up ethically so much but I do have it where like I think I thought something through and know stuff and I know what to do. And then I'll realize I haven't thought it through fully and something really that should have been really obvious reveals itself mm -hmm. after. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah so that's the. I was just gonna say maybe yeah. with Jackie it was like both of like the bottom functions like ganging up on you then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's the difference between NI at the top and NI in the lower part of the stack. Mm -hmm. So NI higher up would notice all of the implications attached to what you're uh, you're doing. So all the future implications, like exactly like where this is going to lead in the future mm -hmm. if you contribute to a missile company or any any company. Um, whereas if, if NI is lower down, it'll, it might take some time to know the full consequences of an action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, Jackie, that you mentioned during the typing session, I believe, is I asked you a question about risk taking and if you if you liked it or if you liked rushes. <laughs> Did I ask you? Yeah, uh, that's one thing. Like, I don't consider myself a huge risk taker. Um, I do enjoy adrenaline, but I just think that it comes easy for me to feel adrenaline. Like, I get scared easy, but like, I do like to push my boundaries on that. Um, like, when I go to a a theme park I will go on the roller coasters that scare me but not necessarily for the feeling of adrenaline but for the feeling of like who I did it like I accomplished that but yeah I do yeah I do like pushing myself that way mm -hmm. how about you yeah me me too so um I do get like that little bit of fear and needing to overcome it but then when I do it um if it's something that is triggering that little bit of fear, it's kind of the mixture of overcoming it and the adrenaline that feels really good. So um, yeah, like like with mountain biking, if I've done something that's got like scary drops in it and stuff, um, and I was a little bit like nervous of that particular trail section or something, yeah, it kind of like, when I do it, which I think is different to like SI users, when I do it for the first time, even though I'm scared, I still feel really good doing it for the first time. I don't know if you get that, Jackie, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like even though you don't know it, it's and it's scary, it still feels good doing it that first time. Um, yeah, and then like not scary adrenaline. So like I don't, so I've been in the sea and done bodyboarding and I don't know if you know what that is, but it's like surfing minus the standing up part. You just like lie on a little board and ride the wave back. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't have any fear there and it was just like the pure enjoyable adre adrenaline, but there was still adrenaline there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that I sometimes um, overdo it. Like um, when I'm going skiing, for instance, I'll be like, I'm going to go on the next level hill. Um, and then I'll realize, wow, this is not fun. This is just pure terror. And I <laughs> thought it was going to be exciting. <laughs> but yeah, I, sometimes I push myself too much that way. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Any final distinctions before we end off the panel? No, I think that was good. Awesome. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else I can think of. I feel like that first conversation we had, I was like less blank than the second one. So yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. This is, 
this is an interesting thought experiment I do too. So when I ask the ISPs, do you have anything else you'd like to say? They normally don't say anything more. When I ask the INPs, hey, do you have anything else you want to say? They're like, yeah, 10 million things. And I'm like, no, yeah. I have in the panel. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just an interesting trend I've seen. Uh, it's kind of a social experiment I, I try to give to. Uh, yeah. But I also try to give people the last word as well. But uh, yeah, I noticed SE in the second position has less to say in general than NE in the second position. So that's another reason why ISP. Yeah. Yeah, that's another type thing. Thank you so much, you both, for coming out and explaining your wisdoms surrounding these two types. There is definitely not enough representation around sensors, so thank you so much for representing all the beauty in <laughs> these two types. I really appreciate the amount of self-awareness you both bring, and Anne, I really love your rings. Your rings are very <laughs> individualistic. They show part of your personality. I kind of get to know you better by looking at you, too. So another another little thing about ISFPs, who are type 4, I, I can kind of tell some things about their personality by looking at how they assess their eyes. So by Anne, if you look at her, there are a few indicators, like very strong indicators of parts of her personality and what she's into at that moment. Yeah, you can like visually see it like hits you in the face right away. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a sign of an ISFP too. Not not all, but for some, you, you will notice just the, the smack of the the certain aesthetic that they have will tell you something about them as a person. And, and so that's really cool. I love the way you dress. I love just your outfits. They, they change day to day. <laughs> your, your assortment of different FI outfits. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And it brings so much personality to the world. It brings so much flair. It's very interesting to, to see the different sides of you, Anne. It's kind of like you switch outfits to kind of like try on different identities and it's really cool. Yeah, I love that about you. And Jackie, what I love about you is there's this kind chillness to you because you're a nine. I feel like very chilled out by you and I feel like I'm in the presence of a kind hearted and sweet person when I'm around you. And I also feel like I don't have to worry about much because you're not judging much. So I feel very chill and I feel very accepted. You, you give an air of acceptance to the people who are around you. And yeah, I like that because a lot of the world can be very judgmental. But when I'm in a space with you, I feel like I can just talk and just be me. Yeah. So oh. you, you, by you being so chill, you hold space for other people. Yeah. So I, I also think these two types have a chillness to them in general, too. Um, like because they're perceivers, they can sometimes be, you know, laid back and more casual. Yeah. So I really like that about your two types. Yeah. And so I infinitely appreciate you, too. And the little nuggets and the big nuggets of wisdom you offered. And yeah. Bye, everyone. Oh, thank you. <laughs>